Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining in. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking, I would I, I welcome you all for the fourth quarter earnings call of Canada Bank. From the management side, we have C V L V Prabhakar, MD and CEO, C Debashish Mukherjee, ED, and other EDs. Without further ado, I would hand over the call to MD Sir for his opening remark, opening remark. Post which we can open the floor for Q and A. Over to you, Flo, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I express my sincere thanks for all the investors who are participating in this uh, interactive session. Uh, let me brief uh, the highlights of the performance of Kendra Bank as on 31st March 2022. We have concentrated on credit growth. We projected that there will be a growth of 7.5%, against which the actual growth is 9.77%. The credit growth is widespread. There is growth in retail, growth in agriculture and lead activities, and MSME. Apart from this, there is a growth in corporate also. So put together in each and every sector, we ensured that the growth should be about 10% YY growth. Regarding deposits, we concentrated on CASA. Savings Bank has grown by 12.22%, and CASA has grown by 11.5%. Retail term deposits, it has grown by 5%. And bulk, we would like to control, and the growth was only 2%, which we expected. Regarding the asset quality, as we have forecasted, we continuously try to reduce the gross NPA and net NPA in absolute terms as well as in terms of percentage. Gross NPA at the beginning of the year was about 60,000 crores. As on that, it has come down to 55,000 crores. In percentage terms, it was 8.93. As on that, it has come down to 7.51%. Net NPA in absolute terms, it was about 24,000 crores. Today, it has come down to 18,000 crores. In percentage terms, it was at 3.82. Today, it is at 2.65%. Provision coverage ratio, two years ago, Canada Bank used to have about 69% PCR. Today, we are at 84.17%. And in credit cost also, we have controlled, and it is at 1.75% as on December 21st. And as on 31st March, it has come down to 1.53%. Siplage ratio, quarter-wise, it has come down to 0.38%. Regarding the income, we have concentrated to increase the interest income and also other interest income, simultaneously focusing on non-interest income also. YOY, as in March, NIA has grown by 25%. And because of which, the operating profits to debt, 6,202 crores, showing a YOY growth of about 18.8%. Net profit, it was 1,666 crores for this quarter, showing a growth of about 65%. CRAR, last quarter it was at 14.8%. Now it is at 14.9%. After excluding about 23 basis points, which is relating to the dividend payment amount. And this time, Canada Bank is happy to inform that the board has recommended 65% of a paid up capital as dividend, that is 6 rupees 50 paisa per share. Global business, we have crossed 18.27 trillion. And this financial year, we are projecting that we will be crossing about 20 trillion business. With these few words, now we would like to take presence from the investors. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
participants please note whoever wants to ask a question please raise your hand we'll wait for a minute for the question queue to gather okay our first question is from the line of mr dawal so please unmute yourself and ask your question mr dawal yeah uh, sir am i audible please yes you are yeah. yes you are thanks sir i i had uh, two questions uh, first is on uh, you know the sort of uh, comment uh, around uh, canfin uh, uh, home uh, uh, you made comment that uh, there was some corporate uh, governance issue uh, uh, in the company and uh, you know frauds were detected uh, so just wanted to understand uh, you know the quantum of the fraud and uh, also you know i think management in their call mentioned about uh, Uh, some uh, uh, 37 odd accounts uh, from one branch uh, where uh, the it documents were forged uh, so just uh, you know wanted your perspective and uh, size of the fraud and uh, uh, what steps have we taken to address that so that's the first question and uh, then uh, i'll come back to the second question second question please yeah you can uh, yeah the second uh, so question also okay okay yeah so second question was uh, sir on the uh, you know uh, growth uh, for next year i just wanted to uh, understand uh, on credit growth uh, uh, what is the outlook uh, on uh, corporate credit uh, uh, for next year and uh, you know what's the sort of uh, pipeline around uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, and also if you could uh, sort of give some perspective on sectoral uh, level uh, you know where are you seeing uh, corporate credit demand uh, so that that was the second question Uh, let me answer your second question first then first question next uh, regarding the credit growth we are projecting about 8% however we are also targeting at least minimum 10% credit growth in the retail and ram sector regarding the corporate the growth which we are projecting is more than 8% since we have already achieved 8% growth in the corporate sector we are very active in ham projects infrastructure projects then steel even to some extent in power and then we are also we are also active in health sector so the growth we are seeing not in one sector in various sector spread over and apart from corporate as on date our loan book consists of about 57% retail and 43% corporate why am i emphasizing this point 57% ram and 43% corporate is even if any one sector doesn't perform well the other sectors will compensate so that at the end of the year we will be in a comfortable position to exceed our projected credit growth of about 8% and last year that is last financial year credit corporate credit growth was at 8.27% and we feel that with the number of inquiries and also the demand which we are observing in capex we will be comfortably achieving a growth rate of more than 8% now coming to the canfin homes in cnbc i did not say it is corporate governance i said in the best interest of the corporate governance we have conducted the inspection that is the word and the origin is there was a whistleblower complaint which we have received from the nhb then it was discussed in the acb and board and then to find out the reality and also to plug the loopholes and to strengthen the company an investigation was done wherein about 37 accounts were found to be fraud amount is less than 4 crores since some accounts have come so the board has decided that why not we verify the other accounts for the weaknesses if any for the weaknesses if any to be addressed immediately and to strengthen the company credit loan portfolio canara bank as a financial conglomerate is committed to support all its subsidiaries including canfin homes and also it wants to have highest standards of transparency 
and also highest standards of corporate governance. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Ms. Marook. Ma'am, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, sir. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Uh, hi. So, I have a few questions. Firstly, uh, what is the total interest reversal during the quarter? I mean, uh, and why are the slippages high? Uh, Ma'am, if you see the slippages, fresh slippages are about 3,600 crores. Oh. And our recovery, cash recovery is about 3,157 crores, including recovery in written off accounts, plus upgradation of 842 crores, which amounts to about 4,000 crores. So fresh slippages of 3,600 crores is less than the recovery of 4,000 crores. And in this particular 3,600 crores, the composition is agriculture, it is about 600 crores, MSME, it is about 800 crores, and retail is about 600 crores, and remaining amount is other sectors. So basically the slippages are from small accounts where we have found some weaknesses. Those things have been classified as NPA. Coming to a linked parameter, which is SMA2 and SMA1, you can find out from the slides that Outstanding of the loan accounts above 5 crores in those accounts, SMA to outstanding as on 31st March is about 2,300 crores, which is 0.27%. And SMA1 is 3,700, which is equal to 0.43. So both the things put together, it comes to only 0.70%. Mm -hmm. So slippages are under control and it will be under control going forward. Thank you, ma'am. So, so, sir, I just wanted to know if there is any lumpy corporate slippage, but from the breakdown, uh, so uh, because uh, a big corporate account has slipped for many banks, did it slip for you in the previous quarter, or what is the status in the retail sector? No, ma'am. Corporate accounts are not slipped. I think you may be interested to know about the future retail, if I am right. Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Let me tell you, ma'am. Uh, today only we have received about 227 crores in that account, future retail. And our mm -hmm. outstanding is hardly 1,200 crores. Wherein we have provided, in spite of standard account, 60% as provisioning. So that in Q1 FY23, there will not be any, uh, what do you call, uh, significant requirement of making provision. Is it okay, madam? Yes, sir. So, but interest you, income then why has it? So, I just wanted to know that interest income why has it declined quarter on quarter? Why has it fallen quarter on quarter? Uh, Ma'am, if you see the is interest stable, income, yeah. interest income why why why? If you see, there is a growth of about eight point six percent, but quarter on quarter there is a minus of one percent because of two three things. If you see my asset portfolio of rated accounts, AAA, AA and AAA portfolio, it has increased from 65% to 77%. Last year being COVID year, we are very conscious of taking exposure in high rated accounts with low risk. Naturally, when you go for high rated accounts, the yields will be a bit less. However, this thing is confined to only 43% of the corporate, whereas in retail we are getting sufficient, uh, what you call, interest income. So going forward, we see a good tra traction as far as the interest income is concerned. And uh, we have already increased our RLLR rate by 40 basis points, which will be effective from tomorrow. And MCLR in all the buckets, we have increased by 10 basis points, which will be effective from tomorrow. Got it, sir. So, what will be your book uh, links to MCLR and to RLLR? What proportion uh, of domestic... R, RLLR, our book is to the extent of about 34%. MCLR is about 50%. So, about 84% of the book starts giving us higher yields. Got it, sir. So, so, would you expect margins to improve from your own? Uh, Ma'am, NIM, if you see, we have projected about 
2.80. Actually, we are at a 2.82 and we are projecting 2.90. 2.90. That will be minimum. Got it, sir. So, and uh, uh, my last question is this on the Please. bond portfolio. Bond portfolio, sir, what is the cutoff yield on the bond portfolio beyond which you start making mark to market losses? Uh, Ma'am, uh, for your information, the portfolio which our treasury holds in the bond. We will not be getting an uh, what you call depreciation more than 200 to 250 crores, not more than that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Participant, please note whosoever wants to ask a question, please do so by raising your hands. And I would request you to please restrict your questions to two. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Nitin Agarwal. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So uh, on, on this growth front, uh, now we are guiding for a slower advances growth in FY23 than what we have reported in FY22. So why is that so? Because general impression is that FY23 systemic growth should be better than what we have seen in 22. So your thoughts around this? Uh, sir, if you see the guidance which you have given last year, credit growth, we said it will be about 7.5%. But in reality, it is 9.77%. So what we project is the minimum that we are supposed to achieve. So as I said, in 57% of my portfolio, which is RAM, the growth will be more than 10%. And corporate also, as and it, we are at 8%. And we expect that this will also grow at a rate of about 10%. But however, as a minimum uh, what you call the guidance, we have said that our credit book will grow at 8%. Okay. And, but then, on, sir, on the similar lines, if I look at the CASA guidance, that at 38% looks aggressive, in a, especially in a rising rate environment. Uh, uh, how like, fair yeah. it is to achieve this number? Yeah. Uh, uh, regarding the CASA percentage, if you see the CASA growth, it is 11.5% every quarter. And if you see the savings bank growth, it is about 12%. But the percentage of CASA, historically, Kendra Bank was having a lower percentage, and it used to be about 30%, two, three years ago. Every year, we are increasing by 2-2%, and now we have come to about 34.88%. And going forward, we project at 38%. This is a percentage. Why means this year, we want to grow more aggressively in retail term deposits, and wherever we get good rate, even we want to take up some bulk deposits also. So percentage-wise, growth of 2% itself will be significant. However, CASA YOY growth will be ensuring minimum 12%. Okay. And sir, so, uh, the other question is on the NCLT resolution uh, related recoveries that we have reported, which is on slide 35. So if I just look at the average uh, uh, recovery per account, that number seems to be quite small at around a little around say, two, two and a half crore range. So if you can indicate as to how the recovery rate overall is trending, what was the overall exposure in these accounts and how much has been the recovery? And is this similar recovery rate as what you expect from the uh, upcoming resolutions in the coming quarters? See, whenever we talk about NCLT accounts, uh... Uh, in my opinion, I think we should not uh, club each and every account and have an average. No. It should be taken as small accounts, medium accounts, and large accounts. Because historical reasons, small accounts, you may have security. In a larger accounts, you may have a less security. So the percentage, if really, if you want to analyze, it should be bifurcated into three different categories and also secured and unsecured then more uh, scientifically we will be in a position to understand. However, with the past experience, what we see is, at least there will be a realization of about 35 to 40 percent as far as the NCLT accounts are concerned. Okay. And so lastly, on the treasury front, you uh, mentioned 250 crores out of MTM losses. So is, just to clarify, is this as per the, the bond yields where they are today? 
and also if you can share the duration of AFS. Yeah, I request my executive director to kindly respond to this question. Yes, uh, uh, as our MD has uh, said just now, that uh, based upon the portfolio which we have right now and the way in which we have arranged that portfolio, even in this rising rate scenario, the impact, negative impact uh, with regard to the depreciation, we expect would not exceed about 250 crores. So that is what uh, we feel, uh, our uh, estimation on the treasury depreciation. And to add uh, to what our Mukherjee sir has said, if you see the last year performance, in the beginning of the year, everyone was of the opinion that this time, the banks will not be able to make uh, good profits by sale of investments. However, in Kendra Bank, if you see, the quarter on quarter amount which the treasury has earned, as on March, by sale of investments, we have earned about 523 crores. Last quarter, it was 320 crores. Before that, it was 1,133 crores. And June, it was about 647 crores. Put together, it is about 2,000, put together, it is about 2,593 crores, which is a decent amount. And we continue to earn in this range. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Ankur Gupta. Sir, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Sridhar Sivram. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Mr. Sridhar. Mr. Sridhar? Mr. Sridhar, please ask your question. Okay, I think there is some problem with this line. We'll move our next question to Mr. Deepak. Mr. Deepak, please unmute yourself. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah, you are, please, please sir. You okay. are. Uh, sir, I just wanted to understand now, in terms of credit cost, uh, I think uh, uh, you kind of uh, given an uh, uh, indication of 1.4% as compared to 1.53%. Uh, 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 we have done in FI22, uh, and 1.4% is what we are looking at in FI23. So in the absolute level, 11,000 crores is the credit cost that we are looking at in FI23? Uh, yeah, because this time since uh, in SMA1 and SMA2, Mm -hmm. The loan accounts with outstanding more than five crores is very insignificant. Very insignificant. That is, it is about uh, 0.7 percent. We don't see any big accounts uh, slipping going forward. Hence, whatever slippages will be there, it will be in the small accounts, which is natural and which can be properly handled. So that is why we are projecting a slippage yes. ratio of a challenging one. Okay, understood. Understood. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. But but in terms of ROA, we, yeah, we are expecting a big jump, right, from 4, 0.5 to 0.7%, right? Uh, with minimal increase, uh, with the minimum improvement in our credit cost. Uh, so, so what will drive our ROA improvement? Uh, see, we are projecting ROA will be at 0.70%. Correct. Again, again, let me tell, this will be the minimum benchmark for us. It is not the maximum one. So as in the last year we projected 0 0.40 and achieved 0 0.48, this time what we are projecting 0 0.70, that will be our minimum benchmark for as far as ROA is concerned, and we are okay. confident of achieving that. Okay, okay, because because uh, currently I think this year we we are at about 0.48 percent rate. Uh, so in 0.4 is annualized, annualized, yes. Yes. and uh, quarter wise if you see it is uh, better than this figure. What is it really? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, I understand. Oh, yeah, uh, that's from Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. I would request all participants to please keep your questions to two. Next question is from the line of Mr. Rakesh Kumar. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Mr. Rakesh?
So please ask your question. Okay, I think there is some problem with this line. We'll move to our next question from the line of Mr. Money. Please unmute yourself. Mr. Money. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good yes, afternoon. Sir, sir uh, thank you for the dividend of 6.5 rupees. I am holding almost about 40,000 shares. So thank you, sir. It, it, it translates to almost about 1 CR. Here I would like to stress uh, huge amounts are spent as CSR for donation to handicapped people and the needy by the bank. It's a great initiative. And they also run a home for the destitutes. And bank has got about 75,000 retirees, of which maybe about 200 or 250 pensioners may be having handicapped, wholly handicapped dependents. This detail is not available in the bank. The data is not available in the bank. And uh, approximately about 72 crores is spent for the insurance, medical insurance for the serving employees. Whereas these handicapped dependents are not covered under the medical insurance scheme uh, for the retirees. So even if it is, as a corporate social responsibility bank wants to cover them under this scheme of this IBA, that the bank may have to spend only about 20 to 25 lakhs on the whole. Uh, if your good selves can look into this because nobody is having any idea how many retirees are having handicapped dependents? So if you got good self can um, uh, help these parents and for your information, sir, many of the handicapped dependent parents of handicapped dependents have got only one prayer that that offspring should die before they die because they don't want these people to be left in the lurch. So your uh, uh, good heartedness will be appreciated by one and all, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So thank you, sir. Your suggestion is excellent. We really yeah. keep it in our mind. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank, you. thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Siddhar Sivram. Sir, please unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, last time I uh, had some issues uh, with the line. So my question is on the uh, tax rate. Uh, last year we had almost 37% tax rate. Uh, should we expect a normalization of tax rate for the current year? And if so, what sort of rate should we expect? Yeah, one minute. I request my CGM, sir, who is handling the accounts. Please, Ramchandra. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Ramchandra CGM here. At present, we are uh, uh, paying the higher rate of interest of 35%. At the moment, we found that uh, this rate is uh, uh, advantageous to the bank because of the merger, accumulated loss we got to the merger. At the appropriate time, you have a plan of uh, shifting to the new tax regime. So should we assume 35% for the next year also? For the current year? No, no, I have to take a decision at the appropriate time. Sir, I cannot uh, commit now itself. Okay. So my second question is on the guidance that you've given uh, of uh, around 7,000 crores, 40 rupee EPS, you have given a guidance. If I work backwards, it looks like uh, you you are uh, guiding for a total provisioning of close to 15,000 crores. If I assume that your operating profits will also grow at 10% from 23,000 crores to about, say, 25,000 crores, which looks slightly on the higher side. So can you give some guidance on the total provisioning number, the uh, provisioning for NPA and the others? And is my working uh, correct? Uh, so there are two points. One is your uh, assumptions are based on the OP that is going to be there, which you are telling it will grow at 10%. Yeah, I am taking a very uh, conservative number yeah, yeah, based yeah, on what you yeah, have guided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, let me share one important information to you, sir. As for the IBA agreement, if the staff has to be paid 15 days PLI, which we are doing, which you did in the last year, and which we paid this year also, there should be a growth of minimum 15% in the OP. Why, why, why? So I expect that every staff member wants to take 15 days PLI. Accordingly, everyone will strive to achieve a OP growth of about 15%. And regarding the provisioning, sir, as you have seen in the last two years, we do aggressive provisioning to make the balance sheet very strong and to keep the balance sheet ready for the future. 
this is the reason why in the last eight to nine quarters, if you see, every quarter there will be continuous growth in all the financial parameters without any downward trend. And we strongly believe that going forward also, we have to make the balance sheet strong. And for so example, we were hoping for a we were hoping for a five me, digit number of profit for the current year, uh, because of the way the trajectory was going, and it looked like you have ha- you have a very high provisioning number already, but looks like uh, we may not get there. Uh, sir, or uh, is it that you are under pro- under promising sir, and over you will pro- uh, perform better? No, I, I I will share some figures from that uh, you can get the conclusion. Uh, last year, our net profit was about 2,550. This year, it is 5,678 crores. It is almost uh, more than 100%, 120%. And regarding provisioning also, if you see, we are already at 84% and we are projecting 85%. The third point is, for example, future account is there. It is a standard as on date in our books. As on date means as on 23rd of January. Even then, we have provided 60% to that account. We, Our uh, philosophy is we want to be ready for tomorrow by making sufficient provisioning today. So that is the philosophy with which we are working. And it is giving excellent results. And because of which today, the board is in a position to declare a dividend also after a long period. And I think uh, this will, go, uh, going forward, this will give a good dividends because of this approach. Thank you, sir. Sir, my last question on the dividend. Uh, uh, it, your dividend absolute amount is about 20% of the profit. Should we expect right. a continuation of that uh, going forward also? Sir, two years ago when I addressed uh, uh, my uh, what do you call uh, investors, I said we are working hard to take care about the investors, staff, and the stakeholders. And we are of the opinion that we have to give maximum to the investors and the staff and the stakeholders. So our philosophy will go in that direction. And accordingly, I think uh, we hope uh, year on year, the things should become better and better. That is a philosophy, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. And well done, sir. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Anand Lata. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, our next question is from the line of Mr. Pranav. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Pranav? Mr. Pranav? I'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Gaurav Kochar. Please unmute yourself and go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, yes, you evening. are. You are audible, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, sir. So my question is with regard to the slippage uh, in this quarter. If I look at the gross slippage number, it was elevated. Last quarter, the net slippage number was very small. But even if I look at the net slippage number, this was high uh, sequentially. And you're saying that future group was standard. So any other corporate account that slipped in this quarter apart from uh, future group? Uh, sir, the, if you see the fresh slippages, it is about 3,600 crores. Right. And this 3,600 crores, sir, about 800 crores is from the MSME sector. About 600 crores is from the agriculture sector. And about right. same amount, 500 to 550 crores is from the retail, which are all small accounts. So right. whenever we identify any weakness in an account, we would like to classify it as NPA so that it can be cured at the earliest, whatever sicknesses are there. So that is the reason because of which, even if you compare with the last March 21, where the slippages were 14,000 crores because of various reasons, this time the slippages were only about 3,600 crores, out of which we are hopeful that in this current quarter, 25 to 40% of this will be either recovered or will be upgraded. Sure. Sir, and sir, uh, upgrades and recoveries target for next year, total uh, recoveries? 
Sir, first target, our target is always we target for recovery should be more than slippages. For example, right. first slippages, this time it was about 3,600. My cash right. recovery is 3,157 crores and upgradation is 800 crores, which is equal to 4,000 crores. And uh, we are expecting that during the current quarter, minimum 15 to 16,000 crores of recovery will be there, both right. in uh, big accounts and small accounts. Okay, got it, got it, sir. And my next question is, is with regards to uh, Canfin Homes. You highlighted that you sent a team uh, from the bank for detailed audit. Uh, any any findings from from that audit, or that uh, that is a part of the 37 fraud accounts that you disclosed? That is the initial audit, wherein okay. uh, the we observe some irregularities, and uh, the important one is uh, about 37 accounts were identified as fraud. Amount is less than four crores, which is already provided and reported to NHB. And right. now the board has decided that with the same internal team and also with the statutory auditors, there can be further checking of the existing account so that if, if any irregularity right. is there, it can be addressed immediately. And it is an ongoing process. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And, and sir, uh, you, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, last question, if I can squeeze in. Uh, uh, on the Canfin call, they did highlight it that, uh, you know, uh, Canada Bank has deputed three people in the risk function, in audit function, and, and one in the admin admin function. So, apart from this, any other action that uh, that the bank will take uh, with respect to with respect to Canfin Homes? See, Canada Bank will always take proactive steps, depending upon the situation. Right. Or as situation warranted. And uh, Kendra Bank is committed to support Canfin Homes and all its subsidiaries in terms of providing know-how, in terms of giving support, or if required, in terms of capital also. So we are, as a sponsor, we are there to support all our subsidiaries. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Pranav. Sir, please unmute yourself. Hi, thanks a lot. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, sir, I just wanted to have a little bit clarity on the slippage uh, guidance that you have given. So slippage guidance of 1.75, uh, don't you think it is a little bit on the upper side as compared to say FY22 when it was 1.7 percentage? Uh, I can say it is not upper side. Why we have given this 1.75 is we will not be crossing this. It can be less also. It may be, it may end up at 1.5 also, 1.3 also. But uh, right. for in, for the public, we want to say that this is our tolerance limit to which extent it may go. Right, right. And that is the cross slippage. So net slippage can anyhow be negative if your recovery and updates are above. Yes, 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 sir. You are right. Okay, okay. So that is first question. Second question is, uh, can you just spend some time on explaining the treasury income? So treasury income, as I understand, there will be some interest and then there will be some AFS MTM. And then this uh, treasury income that comes in the other income is the sum of the two items. And now if you see, even in this quarter, you have not reported negative. Uh, so is it, is it safe to assume that this number in on a net basis uh, will be in the same range of minimum 300 to 500 crores? Uh, or Mr. Mahesh, are, one minute. Mr. Mahesh, are you there? Yeah. Uh, Mukherj, sir, please. Like we said uh, just now, uh, we do not expect any very drastic change in the depreciation levels in the Treasury. Uh, our AFS duration is around 2.3 which is a very healthy duration, we can say. So with this, we are in a position to manage the risk in the Treasury, which uh, uh, due to this uh, you know, higher rate regime, interest rate regime, which we are facing. So it won't be as good as what it was uh, in this fin uh, last financial year, but uh, it will not show much drastic uh, you know, lowering of the uh, treasury income also. Like we said, we are totally uh, aware of the depreciation levels which our treasury book will uh, undergo, which 
roughly would be somewhere in, uh, in the range of 200 to 250 crore. Right, right. What is the other item in this income? Like, one is minus 200 and then there will be some plus, right? Can you please repeat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, so even if that is minus 200, the treasury income that comes in the other income will have some other components, right? It's just not AFS MTM. No, no, it will have, it will have its other components as well, like it had it uh, this time also. So, uh, you know, profit on exchange transactions and other things they will also be there. They will also contribute like it had contributed. We are totally uh, talking about uh, sale of investments or, you know, uh, the core treasury functions, what I was telling you about that. But there are other, uh, uh, you know, uh, avenues of income which uh, will uh, help boost the treasury income, like we said. Right. So, so if, I, if I do just match by the guidance given by you, say 10% or 8-9% uh, growth in credit and 10 basis points increase in MIM, which will account to somewhere around 13 to 14% increase in NII, and obviously other income factoring in what other income you are saying and obviously taking operating expenses your guidance of uh, profit and eps looks very very conservative i think it can be 30 40 percent higher so am i wrong in this calculation because 1.4 percent of npa provisions would mean around 10 10000 cross max and if i just pin in all the other data that you have guided then this 40 eps looks very uh, conservative uh, sir, this is our minimum benchmark, which is okay. which will always be conservative. And right. going forward, as we declare the June results, we will be revising the forecast also, sir. Guidance will be revising an upper side. Perfect, perfect. So the tax rate of 20, about 30% will continue for how much time? Sir, as sir. long as it is beneficial to us, Till some more quarters, we will continue with that. Once the carry forward losses are over, then naturally we may take a call to shift to the new tax regime. Right, right. So any guidance on how many quarters will that continue? Uh, only going forward, I will be in a position to say, sir. As of now, I think uh, it's difficult for me. Perfect, perfect. And just to repeat, last question from my side, just to repeat. How to please, sir, please, sir, please, please. Yeah, out of 1,000 crores future exposure, 200 crores payment we have received and 600 crores already we have provided. So there is almost nothing to be provided henceforward. Is that right? Sir, we have provided 60%. 6-0 yeah. in future. Crores. So 40% is left over. Generally, our uh, uh, philosophy is to make a provision as far as possible. So we may do in uh, this quarter, remaining amount also. Correct, but you said also you have received 200 crores, right? So 800 yeah, crores. Today, 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 after after excluding 227 crores which I have received, now the balance is 1,200 crores roughly. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Got it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Bhavik Shah. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Bhavik Shah? Okay, uh, next, yeah. Hello. Yes, please, yeah, hello. go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So, thanks for the opportunity. So, I just wanted to know uh, what would be your liquidity coverage ratio this quarter? Uh, sir, as on date, it is 125% LCR. Okay. And, sir. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, please. No, next, sir, sir, go ahead, sir. As on date, it has increased to 140, sir. As on balance sheet date, we are about 125. Uh, okay. And sir, uh, why has this drastic movement been because of deposits or uh, uh, yeah, from uh, 125 to 140? These three things have come. RBI has given this latest on 19th April, some MSF relaxation has given per HQLA. That is also there. Okay. Okay. Oh, understood, sir. 
Uh, answer uh, one more thing. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand uh, how has the slippages been from the restructured book? And yeah. what would be your outstanding restructuring number? Sir, restructuring book is about 14,000 crores as far as uh, uh, under the resolution framework 2 is concerned. And about 5,000 crores under resolution framework 1. Put together, it is about 19,000 to 20,000 crores. We are observing about... Uh, 4 to 4.5% as slippages. And in this restructured book, now the in a resolution framework 1, the repayment is up to 95%. And in resolution framework 2, the repayment is about 85%. Okay, okay. Understood, sir. Um, so that's it from my side, sir. Thank you. Sir, thank, thank you, sir. sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Abhijit Sakari. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir. Good so, evening, first sir. question is uh, on the investment uh, provision. There's a thousand crore uh, hit that we've taken. This relates to the uh, security receipt book? Exactly, correct, sir. Because it has uh, crossed eight years. So, we have made 100% provision. Okay, and then there is a 1500 crore which is still pending there. So that would also get marked down consequently. It will take some years, not immediate, sir. Okay. It okay. will take some years. Immediately, okay. there may be around 300 to 350 crores, which at all, if at all required to make the provision in the full financial year. And sir, on the on the, uh, on the the GSEC book, uh, the impact that you're sharing, uh, potential future impact, what are you looking at in terms of the cutoff yields when you're calculating that number we are you know that is uh, our our uh, uh, outlook is uh, somewhere around 7.50 to 7.60 that is what we expect okay sure so second question is uh, on the slippages uh, if we just uh, reduce uh, if we deduct all the, the retail agri sme slippages we still have 1600 crores of corporate slippages so trying to understand if this is this is like really spread out across a uh, lot of accounts or if there is any large accounts still sitting there large accounts at the most it is about 150 or 120 crores not in four digit yeah, figures or not in higher what you call i can say three digit figure is the spread sure. over one? Sure. And so last question is is a clarification on on the, the pricing of uh, uh, home loans, for example. So when we increase the uh, RLLR rate by 40 basis points, how are we are, are we doing anything on the spreads as well? Is that is that being retained? Are we cutting it? How are we dealing with the spread on top of the RLLR tweaks that we are doing? As far as far as our LLR is concerned, we have increased 40 basis points by maintaining the spread as it is. So there's a straight 40 basis point uh, yes. impact on, yes. the, on, on the and, existing and portfolio book. Of, yeah, and a portfolio of about 34% of my loan book. Okay, got it. This is useful. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Dixit Doshi. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, please. I can hear you. Please yeah, go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, most of the questions have been answered. Just one question. Uh, so, uh, you know, the looking at the growth that we are targeting for FY23, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, and also the recovery and upgradation we are targeting. Is it fair to assume that uh, in FY23 we will not require any uh, fundraising? Uh, sir. As on date, with my present CRAR of 14.9%, I can comfortably achieve a credit growth of about 10%. However, our philosophy is to strengthen the balance sheet and strengthen the capital base as far as possible. And since now the Kendra Bank is in a very strong footing, we can rise at a very competitive rate, 81 bonds and tier 2 bonds. Equity, we are not looking as of now. So 81 bonds and tied to bonds to the extent of about 9,000 crores, we may rise. And this will be taken to our board in the coming, in the next board. And once the approval is there, then we'll be coming to the market. Okay. Okay. And thanks. That's it from me. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Jay Mundra. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. I have three set of questions. Sir, good evening, uh, sir. Please. Good evening, sir. <clears throat> sir, first on Kenfin. So if you can suggest uh, what is the course of action here uh, in the interim, will the current MDCO stay or there could be a potential uh, change of management there? And, uh, you know, and also it looks like the amount of fraud is not that material considering their balance sheet side. So, you know, uh, what what is the thought process there? So, uh... I will uh, break up this question into two, three parts. One, uh, with regard to the stay of MD and CEO there at uh, Canfin Homes. Uh, you see, uh, at the present moment, we do not foresee any change. That is number one. Number two is, uh, with regard to this whistleblower complaint, as we have been explaining you, uh, this has been forwarded by uh, NHB. So we had to pay a lot of attention and seriousness on that, which led to discovery of certain fraud accounts amongst other irregularities, which we have already uh, you know, taken uh, rectification uh, action on them, uh, like provision of the fraud accounts and uh, et cetera, et cetera, on the irregularities. Now, uh, as our MD sir was telling you, uh, telling the uh, other participant, that is, we have, uh, since uh, we have found out certain lacuna, certain irregularities, we wanted it to be more broad-based. So that is the uh, idea with regard to what, uh, as he said, that uh, we have uh, you know, appointed the central statutory auditors of the company to themselves verify and uh, see the books so that uh, it is made more strong in the near future. So. Uh, that is what the basic idea with which we have worked in this area. Understood, sir. Uh, second question is, sir, on your corporate slippages once again. So out of 1600 crores corporate slippages and your SMA 1 plus 2, right, that, that still remains the more or less similar. Uh, so what is the sanctity of this SMA 1 plus 2 number when you have 1600 crores of corporate slippages and you still have, let's say, 1200 crores pending from future? So how should one look at, you know, this 6000 crores of um, SMA 1 plus 2? It, it looks like it does not show the real riskiness in the book. So how would you tie that up? Uh, sir, as far as the corporate is concerned, Regarding this SMA2 and SMA1, which accounts to about 0.7%, this is above 5 crores. And regarding the slippages of 3,600 crores, from which we said that, excluding retail, MSME, agriculture, there is other small accounts called small businesses and others also. And excluding this, the corporate, there is no big account. Even if it is a big account, it is about 110 crores or 120 crores. So put together in a full quarter, the slippages were about 3,600 crores, including everything. And the SMA 1 and SMA 0, where we are projecting about 6,000 crores, there can be some slippages, but not significant slippages in the current quarter. Right. Sir, what I was saying is that last quarter we also had the similar number, which looks very no. small, less no, than last, 1%. No, sir. Last quarter... We had 5,000 crores. Last March, we had about 5,000 crores compared to this March, which is about 0.7% in SMA2, and about 10,000 crores in SMA1, which is about 1.47%. Put together, it is 15,000 crores, constitutes about 2.17%. Right. No, no, so, yeah. so I was comparing, sir, so slippages of 1,600 crores in corporate is clearly for this quarter. So maybe I was comparing versus last quarter. There is not too much change in this SMA 1 plus 2. And we have... Total 1600 crores is not corporate, sir. In that, again, there are small businesses and retail also to some extent. Where they are not corporates. And corporates, when we say 100 crores, 150 crores, such accounts are one or two only. Okay. Understood. And, and third question is, sir, on capital and tax. So... Um, 
so one is we have accumulated losses of 18000 crores plus which we have set off uh, despite having that uh, you know the, it looks like we are still paying accounting taxes whereas one other psu banks when they uh, you know uh, shifted to new tax regime or without shifting to new tax regime when they had accumulated losses they were still showing negative taxes negative. so uh, why are we not showing tax provisions right back when we have accumulated losses or, uh, or if you can explain that see as already informed by our md and ceo as long as advantages to the bank with the higher tax regime we are continuing with the higher tax regime i confirm that as on today it is advantages to us to have a higher rate of uh, tax because of the reversal of the whatever the uh, carry forward loss so when it is advantages to the new tax we are really going to shift it no no so i am asking sir when we have accumulated losses of 18000 crore why are we still paying taxes sir see the accumulated loss is not a static every time it is reducing also so i can only tell it is advantages as on today with the higher rate of interest with the tax paying also it is advantages totally overall it is advantages to the bank sorry how sir how paying taxes are advantages i will you can come off the line we can explain sure 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 sir okay and uh, yeah, lastly on ifr sir uh, investment fluctuation reserve uh, it looks like rbi had asked bank to provide at least 2% of um, ifr and it looks like we did not we we we, we have only done some 1.7% something if i look at the last annual report so it is fully I, provided now it is now, fully provided now. okay okay it is and fully sir, provided sure sir and how much sir, is the sir please come back thank you sure thank you sir our next question is from the line of ms sneha please go ahead and mute yourself and go ahead ms sneha please ask your question ma'am thank you selling of your nfs subsidiary is on the fundraising plan ma'am could you please be a little louder Uh, just wanted to know any plans you are planning to sell any of your subsidiary and second question is any plans to raise a capital considering the growth which we are targeting uh, madam uh, to answer your first question uh, at present uh, we do not see any necessity for uh, any uh, you know lowering our stake in any of our subsidiaries for the present moment Uh, that is number one with regard to raising of capital as our md had very clearly stated uh, that uh, regarding uh, the growth which we are envisaging uh, in uh, credit uh, it is not necessary for us to raise capital on account of that but for strengthening the balance sheet further we may come out uh, with uh, some uh, you know plans for raising capital which we will separately take up with our board of directors uh, in the in the coming months and get their permission and then we will announce that hello thank you uh, thank you sir madam, thank could you, you get my answer madam okay, yes and sir one more thing uh, during the fourth quarter we have seen a high substantial fee income can we expect the same trajectory to be continue in the coming quarters on the fee income side fee uh you see our endeavor is always for uh, you know maintaining the fee income uh, of course uh, the contribution of treasury would be less but at the same time the fee income by way of commission and uh, lcbg uh, commission and other uh, our bank assurance business government business service charges etc we would continue uh, the same level of uh, income so far as the fee based income is concerned okay got it sir thank you thank you ma'am this would be our last question for the day i'll now, now pass on the mic to md sir for his closing remarks sir uh thank you very much for all the investors uh, for uh, giving us an opportunity to 
clarify if any doubts are there and also to project our future uh, guidance. Uh, today, really, we are happy as our board has uh, kind enough to declare the dividend for which we have worked hard in the last two years to take care about our investors, about our staff, and about our stakeholders. We expect this same type of uh, support and cooperation from you all people. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking, I thank the Canada Bank Management for giving us the opportunity to host them. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Goodbye, and have a good weekend. Bye.